Until a couple of weeks ago, I've been an anime only for The Promised Neverland. After each episode got quicker paced, more action oriented, less mysterious, and started giving away the mystery a dime a dozen, I felt like something was up. Little did I know how bad things really were. Halfway through season two, it turns out, the whole William Minerva storyline wasn't done. And on top of that, a solid 60 or so chapters were skipped over entirely leaving the anime with less than half the story of the entire manga, basically making it an adaptation for the beginning and the end. What happened? Early warning signs for some came from the episode count. 11 episodes is the least possible amount of episodes to cover a season in anime, which is how the anime industry commissions most shows to air, per season. Going for 11 episodes was an interesting choice considering what was coming next in the manga, and after reading through it, it just shows that going through the story in a methodical adaptation was never their plan when they started this season. If we look at some other factors, we see some even more interesting facts. The Promised Neverland is an anime by Cloverworks Incorporated. For this season alone, that is, the winter season, Cloverworks is working on three separate anime productions all at the same time. Hori-san to Miyamura-kun is a 13-episode anime based off of a manga, and Wonder Egg Priority is a 12-episode original anime. To add even more madness to the schedule, many of the staff will be gearing up for Shadow's House, which airs in April, straight after The Promised Neverland, Hori Santa Miyamorikan, and Wonder Egg Priority. It doesn't explain why they decided to make the entire manga fit into a single season, but it makes sense as to why there was a recap episode so early on into release. Though, if we're looking at actual reasons why that decision was made for this production, that they cut such an expansive series short, then it's probably due to the manga having already finished. When there's no new products to sell, it doesn't make sense to advertise it with an anime when there's continuously new franchises and new series that don't have the advertisements that an anime adaptation could offer. Alongside that, when you have the freedom to make a franchise all of your own, then there's clearly going to be a priority made. If anything, it's just shocking that The Promised Neverland wasn't popular enough to spurn on an adaptation self-sufficient enough to go through the whole story by itself. I realize it's no monolith like the frenzy that Demon Slayer created more recently, but it seemed like a safe enough bet that there was an audience for the anime entirely independent of the manga. After all, Demon Slayer's astronomical sales are pretty much due to the amazing anime adaptation. And now that very same adaptation is staying afloat all by itself. Again, I know that The Promised Neverland is no Demon Slayer, but it's kind of bewildering to see the flip side of the razor thin coin that is the anime industry. The anime industry itself has exploded in recent times, causing, debatably, too many productions to be made. With a culture of underpaid animators and an unwatchable amount of shows out there constantly being made, constantly being churned out, it's never been clearer to see what effect this overpopulation might have, especially on shows that aren't financially viable, and how far that line can be stretched when workers are underpaid and productions see massive returns. It's a very similar thing to the game industry, and it's a scary, dystopian, ironically farm-like attitude that's becoming normalized. Obviously, Japan's culture of work ethic is a big part in this, but as a much smaller result of that issue, we're seeing what can happen to an already successful franchise. The real shame of The Promised Neverland rounding off its adaptation in such a truncated way is that this may well be it for the whole franchise getting adapted. The first season was pretty much unanimously loved. It was a fantastic, cinematic, well-paced mystery series that was well in tune with the source material and will probably never be dethroned by a potential remake. With that in mind, going over the anime from episode one all the way through would be pointless. So then, looking at how much there was left unadapted, if it made no sense for them to just carry on and follow through with the story right on the heels of the manga literally ending, then it makes even less sense for them to go partially back and readapt some parts and then carry on as if season two never happened, especially as that ending date will only get further and further away. I think it's fine if you could look past the issues of season two. I wish I could, but for those who don't, it's looking to me as if we're gonna have to live with it because that's just what happened to the promised Neverland. This is a separate issue entirely, but we all know that the anime industry is pretty unfair to animators 
so please don't harass the staff, because this really is just a smaller issue from that issue, it's just a show at the end of the day, and there's too many instances where people feel like that's an appropriate response to have. It's never an appropriate response to have. Is this a shame? Absolutely. It's just never one to take out on real people. But anyway, thank you to my patrons, thanks everyone for watching the video, comment your thoughts down below, like, subscribe, but most importantly, have a wonderful night.